What's up, my precalc people? In this video, we're going to be analyzing the 2024 AP Precalculus free response question number two, which is, of course, over modeling a non periodic context problem. All right, so let's dive right into it. All right, on, a, on the initial day of sales, t equals zero for a new video game, there were 40,000 units of the game sold that day. 91 days later, on t equals 91, there were 76,000 units sold of the game. The number of units of the video game sold on a given day can be modeled by the function g, which is given as a plus b natural log of t plus 1, where g of t is the number of units sold in thousands on day t since the initial day of sales. Now, before we dive too far on this problem, let's remind you that this is a natural log model or a logarithmic model. And logarithmic models look like this. They increase, but they are concave down, so they increase at a decreasing rate of change. So they're increasing, but at a slower and slower rate. All right, so the first question for this question, of course, is to use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values of constants A and B. Now, I'm assuming that they strategically chose this model because if you use the, the logarithmic regression on your calculator, it's A plus B natural log of X. It's not X plus one. So that's why you can't use your calculator to get the model here. You got to do the work by hand. So it's actually pretty easy to do part one here. All we got to do is use the two given points. So we're going to plug 40 in for G, 40,000 40, units were sold when T was zero. So we get this equation right here. We're plugging in zero for T and 40 for the number of games sold G. And then we simplify that. We get a pretty easy equation there. Then we're going to use the other piece of information on day 91. There were 76,000 units sold. So again, plug that in. We could add 91 and one to get the 92. So here is our second equation that we could use to solve for A and B. Pretty simple. All we have to do is plug those values in. Now, of course, part two is going to actually say, show your work to solve for A and B. So first, let's start off with that equation on the left, 40 equals A plus B natural log of one. Now, this is really awesome because the natural log of one is something that you should know, and you are allowed to use your calculator on this section, so feel free to grab a calculator, but the natural log of one is zero. Therefore, B times zero is zero, and we just get 40 equals A. That was pretty simple. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that a value, 40, we're going to plug it into the other equation for a. So we're taking that other equation, 76 equals a plus b natural log of 92, substituting the a in for the 40. And we are going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract that 40 over, giving us 36. Then we're going to divide by the natural log of 92. Remember, the natural log of 92 is just a number. And again, we are allowed to use our calculator. So 36 divided by the natural log of 92 is 7.961. I always like to round to three decimal places. So we have two values that did say give decimal approximation. So A would be 40 and B would be 7.961. So in total, our model would be the number of games sold in thousands is 40 plus 7.961 times the natural log of t plus 1. All right, part b is, has three parts, and the first thing says use the given data to find the average rate of change of the number of units of the video game sold in thousands per day from t equals 0 to t equals 91 days. Express your answer as a decimal approximation. All right, so this is really, really simple to do. Remember, we know two points. We know the first point is 0, 40,000 units sold, and 91, 76,000 units sold. So we're going to simply find the rate of change between those two points, which is you know another fancy way of saying slope. So here it is showing my work. The average rate of change between those two points is subtracting my outputs, 76 minus 40 on top, and then subtracting my inputs, the 91 minus 0 days on the bottom. So 36 over 91. 91. And again, it did say get a decimal approximation. So that's 0.3956. Now remember that number is in thousands of units. So kind of using that value, we can move that decimal one, two, three times. So that would be 395.6 units per day that we are increasing by. So from zero to 91 days, the number of units of the video game sold is increasing at an average rate of 0.3956 thousand per day or 39.5. 39, 395, excuse me, 0.6 units per day over that period. All right, now for the second part of section B. Use the average rate of change found in part one to estimate the number of units of the video game sold in thousands on day T equals 50. Now, how do we do this? Well, basically what we did 
But I'm just going to kind of draw a quick picture here. So, right, so we have a logarithmic model, and we knew one point was 0, 40. We knew that next point was 91, 76. And what we did was we took a linear line to find the average rate of change between those two points, and that's the slope that we just found. That's the rate of change that we just found is that line. But we want to continue this line, or we want to estimate, you know, so this was a t value of 0. This was a t value of 91. So 50 is somewhere in between there, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe right around here. So we want to use the line, the red line, the linear line, that's our average, that's where our average rate of change came from, to find the prediction for 50. So the first thing we have to do is find the equation of that line, because if we find the equation of that line, well, we can plug in anything we want and get an output. So to find the equation of the line, remember we need the rate of change. Well, we already have the rate of change, we just found it. Now the rate of change, again, was 0.3956, but I'm actually going to use the 36 over 91 just to be a little bit more exact, because the 0.3956 was rounded. And the second thing I'm going to need is a point. Now I could actually use either point. I could use the 0, 40, or I could use the 91, 76. It does not matter. But I'm going to start off with point slope form because the easiest way to find the equation of a line is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, good old point slope form. And we actually call this a secant line. I don't know if you've heard that or not. doesn't necessarily mention that the problem, but when you are drawing a line, finding that average rate of change connecting two points of a function, we call that a secant line. So again, it's a linear line, so I'm going to use that formula there to find it. So I'm going to use the point 0, comma 40. It's much easier because of the 0. So I have y minus 40 equals that slope, that average rate of change as a fraction, just trying to be exact, 36 over 91 times x minus 0. Obviously, I'm going to add that 40 over, and again, x minus 0 is just x, I don't have to worry about it. So right here is an equation. This is the equation of my linear line that I could use to make predictions. Now, what they want me to do is use that average rate of change and use that line to predict what's going to happen at 50 days. So now, all I got to do is plug 50 into the equation. Pretty simple. And again, I like to use that, that fraction to be more exact. 36 over 91 times 50 plus 4, and I got 59.780 thousand units. So for t equals 50, my average rate of change predicts the number of video games sold on day 50 to be 59,780 units. Pretty, pretty simple there. Not too bad, but you do have to be able to find the equation of that line. And again, we can actually use this line to predict whatever we want. We could predict, you know, 10 days, uh, 47 days, 63 days, 89 days, whatever we want to do there. All we got to do is plug in for X. But again, that's using the line. All right. Part three says, let A sub T represent the estimate of the number of units of the video game sold in thousands using the average rate of change. So basically they're saying, hey, this equation we came up with right here, this is going to be A sub T. It's going to use the average rate of change to find the number of units sold on any given day. All right. And what they say is that for A sub 50, the estimate that we just found in the second part, it can be shown that it's less than 50. In fact, I actually wanted to show that real quick. So here is me plugging 50 into the model. Remember that model we built? This was the logarithmic model. It goes like that. If I actually plug 50 into that, uh, here's my work shown. Again, you are allowed to use a calculator. We get 71.301 thousand units. But the prediction we literally just got with our line was 59.780. So again, we literally just proved what they told us, that our prediction using the average rate of change for 50 days is less than what the model actually says is going to happen on 50 days. So what they want us to do is explain why, in general, um, any value found using our prediction line is going to be less than that corresponding value from the model for all values between 0 and 91. Now, the easiest way for this to be very simple to explain is to make a graph of it. Now, I made the graph I'm about to show you in Desmos, but you could usually make this graph on your calculator as well. Desmos just makes it a little bit prettier to see on a computer screen here. So here it is. So here is the point 0, 40. Here is the point 91, 76. And I actually created that line. That was the line that we found. That was our average rate of change line between those two points. And then in red, we see the actual G of T, the logarithmic model. And what I want you to notice is look in between 40 right here and 91 right here. In between, notice how my model, the red model, is above any prediction. So any prediction for my average rate of change coming from the purple line is going to be less than the model predicts. That's because the log logarithmic model is curving curving up like that at a decreasing rate. So when I connect those two points, my average rate of change line is going to be below 
that model between those two points. So between uh, 0 and 91, we definitely see in that region, in that interval, we could literally see how our predictions from that average rate of change line are going to be less than anything that the model says is going to be true. So that's the explanation right there. It's not pretty simple, pretty easy. Just kind of kind of describe that in words and write that out. And again, you can even reference the graph, maybe even make a little graph on your paper if you want to really explain your point there. All right, now moving on to the final section of number two. The makers of the video game reported that daily sales of the video game decrease each day after T equals 91. Explain why the error in the model G increases after T equals 91. Now let's make sure you understand what they mean by error. What they're talking about here is the residuals, right? The residual is the difference between what the model says and what our average rate of change predicts. And they're saying that that residual value, that difference between what our linear line predicts and what the model shows is going to increase. Now to do this, I actually want to go back to the graph. Now remember, this value right here was 91. And look at what happens after 91. It's a switch. Now my linear line, actually let's zoom in on that so we can see a little bit more. All I do is zoom out. So here's that 91 right here. And we see that after 91, when t is greater than 91, the logarithmic function continues to increase, but at a decreasing rate because it's concave down. But the linear line, my average rate of change line, is going to continue to increase at a constant rate of change. So after 91, my prediction line is going to go up and the actual model is going to continue to go up, but at a lower rate. So it's going to be below the line. We can literally see it. And then what we could notice is that the residual or the error is going to increase. So notice the residual is the difference between what my model says and what my prediction average rate of change says. And we could literally see that that error, those residual values are going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger because the difference between my model and my average rate of change line is going to continue to increase after 91. So what I wrote was a logarithmic model is concave down, so the rate of change is decreasing over time, whereas the linear prediction line has a constant rate of change that is increasing. So we can see that after 91 days, the error between the model G of T and the linear prediction line is getting larger and larger and larger. And again, drawing a little picture, anything like that's going to aid the graders in making sure that you get this question correct. But hopefully that all makes sense. And again, this is a, not too bad of a question. A lot of kids are going to want to try to use their calculator to get A and B back in part A, but because of that t plus one you're going to have to do it by hand but it's actually pretty simple math nothing overly complicated all right hope you guys did well in this problem